as we begin this journey, a journey into the past, a journey that will bring us to ghettos, concentration camps, gas chambers and crematoriums, a journey of a people following their footsteps from place to place, the slow process of dehumanization, of mass killing, of inhumanity, a journey that will last in our minds forever with the hope that we will take action in our lives and whatever we do in all our human encounters. We must move forward, but first we need to look at the past. We're here in the uh, heart of the downtown of modern Warsaw in uh, 2016, and we're standing right in front of what was a Jewish orphanage established by an amazing, internationally renowned uh, educator, pedagogue, called Janusz Korczak. Love the child, not just your own. I mean, the child has a right to love. What you're looking at here was an orphanage, okay, that was established before World War II. July of 1942. He is taking his 200 children with him to the trains, and that day they're going to be uh, murdered in Treblinka. 2016, 5,000 Jews out of 1.7 million residents. This is one of the few vestiges of Jewish life, even though it's a cemetery, that one can see in Warsaw today. As a mother, I'm thinking about the child in the poem who's concerned, who's taking care of his mother. We are hardwired as parents to protect our children. It speaks to me. It's not a place of death, it's a place of life, of living values that we still carry in our day uh, as human beings. As we were walking through, I found myself getting very emotional because, you know, in the United States, the cemeteries are extremely sacred ground, and to see all the broken tombstones and the mass grave of 50,000 people that's just ripped off, I found it very sad. favorite meal? Food, food, what you love to eat. The most important thing in it is that people from different cultures are, have an opportunity to meet with each other and this is for me the most important thing. So it brings them together it's an interesting I guess conversation about why would you be interested in all this history and all those issues when you're not related. Diversity is a key aspect to any population in general. I think that every ethnicity, every culture, every race should be heard from their perspective because you're not going to have the same story from each person. I think it's so important to teach diversity throughout my school and I hope to bring back the experiences that I've had here and take that to my school. Wing, wing, vodka's fun, Bruce, Romania, hey, bien pesky, Bruce, <laughs> Poland is ghettoized, meaning in Poland, when the Nazis invade in September 1939, they meet the largest Jewish population anywhere in all of Europe. We have to be very cautious and careful not to project backwards what we know is the end of the story. In 1939, a Polish Jew has no idea and could not possibly have any idea that mass murder is around the corner. It's very overwhelming to be uh, here in the middle of Poland where all this went down. Uh, he just said that less than 10% of people who stayed in, in Europe and Nazi Germany uh, and the whole occupation survived and my grandmother was one of that 10% and it's just crazy to realize how incredibly lucky she was. Just a lot to take in. The gravity and the enormity of the Holocaust, uh, both in the sum aggregate total of numbers of people affected and the individual stories, uh, is a critical aspect of our humanity. In Treblinka, and the numbers vary, it goes between 875 and 925,000 
people were murdered here. Being here at Treblinka is making me feel so empty because um, I'm trying to like grasp what happened here and I just can't. After Auschwitz, this is the largest and most efficient and effective killing center that the Nazis create. Go to Treblinka. Keep your eyes wide open. Sharpen your hearing. Stop your breathing. And listen to the voices which emerge from every grain of that earth. It's a really powerful experience. Um, it's hard to stand here and know what occurred, and it makes me angry to know that what was here is gone. So secretly, they established these places, fooling people that they were being taken to places where they're going to work again under good conditions. And when they came here, within two hours, nobody was alive. It was unprecedented and unbelievable. And we should be cocking our ears, listening to people who intend to do these things again. We never learned what happened, and that these things are happening again, not to a great extent as it happened. To us here, we've never learned a lesson, and we have to be very vigilant, and every one of us do their part to make sure that it doesn't happen again. Tens of thousands of innocent lives went up in black smoke. The souls of the people who died here cry out to this day. All utterances of art and poetry fail here. What artist can give form to chaos, and yet we try. The prisoners themselves try. How much learning wisdom and treasure of experience went with them, we will never know. We vow to renew our commitment to teaching tolerance, and more than tolerance, human kindness, sympathy, and respect for every member of the human family. In and out of our classrooms, may we have the courage to denounce inhumanity wherever we find it. <laughs> יאסטירם בסדר כנפיו לעולמיים, ויצרור ביצור החיים את נשמותיהם. אדוני הוא נחל עצם, וגלתם בנוחתם, ויעמדו לגורלם לקיים חייהם. זה לא מעט. אמן. אני הוואר צ'נדלר, אני הוואר צ'נדלר, אני הוואר צ'נדלר. And my number in Auschwitz was 19831. It is very important because what we went through and what happened during the Holocaust, that there are people who are denying that it ever happened. At the expulsion, at the ghetto, the ghetto, this is our house in the corner. This, this in the corner. Yes, where it says Salon Firant. Yes. It feels very happy to be here, but I miss the people who were here with me. This is the only sign in town that Jews ever existed, and we're, and we're part and parcel of this community, with the exception, of course, of the Jewish cemetery, which we are trying to preserve. Howard, on behalf of Classrooms Without Borders, we have been a part of this journey for many years with you. And today we are gathered here for, after 74 years, for a much better reason, to honor and to remember all those that were here. Thank you very much. So
My grandmother's original Yiddish name was Fega Malka Gottesman. I would like to present to you a survivor named Murray Ebner. Throughout her life, she had a resilient strength and a resolve and a resolute sense of humor. His life was idyllic with a beautiful home and a devoted mother. One morning from the train window, my grandmother saw a beautiful sunrise. She thought to herself, why is it so bad for us when there is such beauty in the world? Then that would begin to change and gradually end. The German invasion was 19 days after his 11th birthday. My grandmother was a remarkable woman who was greatly loved and respected by all who knew her. Mr. Ebner sadly passed away on November 8th last year, and I truly wish I could have met him and got to know him. I spoke to his son, Mark, this week, who described his dad as a very religious and powerfully optimistic, extremely proud to be an American, and sincerely appreciative of precious life. Now, especially here today, when I think of Murray Ebner, I think of those exact words, precious life. Thank you. I love you, Grandma. Shalom. I will try as hard as I can to fight for it. Humanity and intolerance needs to stop is my number one message that I will want to bring back. It's just been a complete eye-opening experience and I hope that I can just share my experience with everyone else and hope that they can just even a little bit understand what I sort of understand about what these people went through. I think this trip has made me depart from that thing to say the people who, the man who perished. Who maintains a lot more personal characteristics than that? That makes it almost as if it's a gear, it's a mechanical piece. And I think we've all agreed now that they're not mechanical pieces, they're not just numbers. They are people. It's really important to focus on the past and know what happened, but I think the most important thing is us moving forward. Like now, I want to go back home and for the rest of my life, I want to love everything with everything I have in me <laughs> and um, I want to love so much and I want to love for all the people that died that couldn't use up all that love. We're lucky enough to be able to talk to our family every day, call them on the phones, get letters from them and experience life. But to actually be here and to be walking in the footsteps of a survivor and to meet Howard, uh, his it's been incredible. Classroom Without Borders has helped me turn the theoretical into reality. I had no idea what I was going to experience, but I know that I will come out of this as a completely different person. Um, I think the experience has forced me to make my assignments focus on those individual lives. Classrooms Without Borders uh, is an experience that I would challenge any teacher to at least look into. Definitely my biggest highlight was just seeing Howard walk through where he spent years of his life. The way he carried himself. Every time I think about Poland, he comes up. I want to thank you very much for this, for this warm and kind and meaningful welcome. Thank you very much. It is hard to believe that the mayor of a present day Poland would do such a thing, but things do happen, and happily in this respect, they happen with goodwill, and I believe it. Before the war, such a thing could not have occurred. As we close our journey, a journey that we began as separate individuals, and yet through these collective moments, we've created memories, memories of the past, analyzing who we are and where we're going. Past, present, future. We move forward and we make a difference. This is Classrooms Without Borders.